Welcome back lads and it's our new video about Dungeon and Dragons Dark Alliance. Dark Alliance is Dungeon and Dragons without the dice rolls and it's intense combat focused action RPG where you slay monsters, collect loot and fight alongside a party of powerful heroes but with the usual trappings of the traditional RPG. There are no walls of dialogue or deep lengthy quests to be found here, just a lot of goblins and other full beasts to kill, and some very impressive looking location to do in it. In Dark Alliance we found the complication of the hall, a legendary band of adventures led by DD favorite Dizzy Droden as they search for a magical MacGuffin called the Shard. Armies of villains and monsters from the Orde Colles Farun, the titular Dark Alliance, are lusting after the shard and the power it holds, and you have to stop them. It's a pretty standard fantasy plot, but given weight and authentically by involvement of veteran DD scribe and teller of some of Icewind Dale monsters' memory tales, R.A. Salvatore. The story takes place just after the Crystal Shard, the first novel in the author's ice win Dale trilogy, meaning there is plenty of crossover with the books. Icewind Dale is a chilly frozen tundra and one of the most storied and evocative regions of Faerun. Fans of Black Ice Classic Infinity Engine RPG of the same name will get an extra kick out of returning to this frosty realm of ice, dragon, snowbound, mountain passes and deep dwarven halls. It's a dungeon and dragons at its beast an enjoyable dramatic backdrop for an action RPG. The world is immense in scale and lighter with history, and it's one of the most vibrant, vivid depictions of the forgotten realms I haven't seen in game. Dark Alliance is a linear action game, so you don't get to explore the world as true as you would in RPG. But what there is stunning to look at? The art is magnificent throughout, particularly the cavernous atmospheric environments, which are like the covers of vintage fantasy novels come to life. Standout locations include a crystal fortress hidden in mountains, crawling with creepy shard worshipping cultists and growing eerily in the pale moonlight. You also visit the shattered remains of ancient city, a massive warren forge crisscrossed with a river of molten metal and a twisting valley that become a ramshake makeshift city for a horde of beaking goblins. Everything is extra red, colorful and larger than life, which is refreshing to see in this era of darker more mute medieval fantasy. The monsters look superb too. By the time you reach the end of Dark Alliance story you have slain an entire bestiary of classic dark and dungeon monsters, including dragons, beholders, dwarder, giant, trolls, rain and thousands upon thousands of stinky butt-slapping goblins. These familiar creatures have all been brought vividly to life with experience animation, amusing voice acting and a spread of unique abilities that make them a joy to fight. They are wonderful hateful too which makes running a sword through their guts extra delicious. This is the most I've enjoyed battling a bunch of monsters since the Shadow of Mordon similar characterful loathsome orcs. The giant flesh-eating wergy crap you with their chains and the yank you toward them. Trolls are trick-skinned and have regarding health. Darger mags knock you off your feet with a blast of the ice magic. Cultists teleport around the battlefield and shoot beams of arcane energy at you. This is really fun, varied selections of enemies and you frequently fight several types at once, forcing you to mix your tactics up on the fly. It's relentlessly fast paced game, rarely giving you more than a few seconds to catch your breath before the next card, which is extremely and occasionally slightly exhausting. There are four playable characters, each bringing a unique flavor to the combat. Draw Ranger Drizzt is the fantastic athlete, rubbing enemies up with the twin skimmers and seizing his sprint pattern and going yard on them. X Swinging Dwarf King Brueror is the tank of the party, able to soak up huge amount of damage and draw aggro by taunting. Wolfar is a barbarian who can whip himself into a berserker rage and deal extra damage with a giant hammer. And Kelp Eber is bouncy nimble archer who can attack from a distance. The flow and the feel of the combat difference greatly between characters and I love how levels unlocked with the one character are unlocking for the others, 
meaning you can experiment with each hero without having to raid all parts of the game. The enemy variety combined with the ability to block, dodge and parry gives Dark Alliance surprising deep, it feels fantastic too. The combat is chunky and tactical, and craning through the enemies with a big heavy weapon is as satisfying as it should be. You can bash through the crowds of weaker enemies without much through, but stronger foes demand a degree of the patience, locking on, rolling away from the attacks, blocking just as they strike to a party. It's a heady mix of crowd control and more considered methodical 1-1 duels, and it works brilliantly if you keep up with the fanatic pace. Dark Alliance has been designed with a co-op in mind. The four heroes have MMO-style abilities that complete each other, including staff-boosting buffs and healing spells. You can also trigger team attacks on a single enemy, however it's entirely possible to play and enjoy the game solo. I played through a good chunk of the stories of my own and I had a great time with it. You can choose a, from a number of difficulty settings, the lowest of which makes playing solo as a breeze. Nudging a top notch and you have a to think a little more tactically in the battles. Higher still and the game becomes genuinely difficult, especially in the late game dungeon levels, where the enemies are stronger and more numerous. I struggled with a few of these battles, particularly one where I had to fight a large group of renegading trolls simultaneously. But I always managed to make it to the end of the level, even if it means dying and respawning a dozen times. Clearing an area of enemies and you will be given the opportunity to make camp restore your HP and trigger a checkpoint. Or you can bypass the checkpoint entirely and increase your loot ready level instead. This adds nice elements of risk and reward of the game, especially for a lone player. Some enemies will even make sneering comments about you dating to face them alone, which is nice touch. This is a great co-op game and the 30-60 minute levels mean you don't have to set hours aside to play it with the time shared buddies, but I'm delighted that the developer made solo plays just as valid. I just wish there was an option to fight alongside an AA piety in single player. Dark Alliance is fighting game first and foremost, and the level design reflects this. Each map is a series of combat arenas linked by corridors, with the occasional secret passage of chamber marked by a telltale splash of red paint. Most secrets are pretty conspicuous, which seems like a mindful effort by the developer to keep playing moving and keep the action flowing. There are some optional bosses too, but for the most part you're just moving forward in a linear fashion, slaying monsters until you reach the end of the level. Along the way there are traps. The odd simple and environmental puzzle to solve, piles of gold and treasure chests. The world is really just a place to have a fight and rightly push the combat to the forefront. A few things did annoy me too. If you are fighting an enemy next to a ledge, they will be magically prevented from falling off by invisible wall, but you just keep engaging forward as you swing your weapon and eventually fall through them of the ledge yourself. Falling doesn't kill you, but it's still frustrating. The readability of the bigger, more chaotic battles can be poor too. With so much going on and so much clutter on the screen that you can lose tracks of your fighting or miss otherwise clearly telegraphed attacks. I also had some UI issues, including enemy health, bars disappearing, in one level a portal stopped working, leaving me started on a floating island with no way to kill myself and warp the back of the last checkpoint. I had to restart the whole level and repeat around 50 minutes of the grueling battles to get back where I was. And once I permanently silent for no reason, leaving me magic less for a low act, my co-partner also encouraged the some bucks of his own. So who knows what you might run into when you play. It's a shame because these issues are a blight on what is otherwise selling the game. With RTX 2080 Super and i7 9007K, I was able to play in the 4K at the max settings at the stable 60 FPS, which really added to the creepy feel of the combat. But box aside, Dark Alliance is blast. It brings in the world of Dra Dungeon and Dragons to life brilliantly, with meaty combat, a, a gorgeous world and some truly despicable monsters to cray up. It's a reminder of what makes the Forgotten Realms such a great fantasy setting. 
and a welcome chance to return to the Icewind Dale, a place a lot of PC gamers, myself include Lau. If you are more than of an RPG fan, you might find the non-stop combat a bit much. There is a game about killing monsters above, and it's some of the most joyously brutal monster killing on the PC you ever seen. Conclusions A frustratingly entertaining action RPG whose horrible monster I'd be like to slay, whenever you are playing solo or the co-op.